Welcome back. The previous chapter was a short history of mobile communications. We're now going to look at how 5G is positioned to handle future telecommunication needs, or more simply, what 5G will offer that 4G doesn't. 20 years ago, we were amazed just to be able to view short, grainy videos on our laptops. Today with 4G, we use our phones to watch live broadcasts of sports events from anywhere, at any time. And we can make video calls with friends and family overseas using apps like WeChat, WhatsApp, or Line. So what more do we need from mobile networks? The International Telecommunications Union has been looking into that. Based in Geneva, ITU is an agency of the United Nations responsible for all communications and information technologies. It's part of ITU's job to anticipate our future telecommunications needs and point the way forward. ITU started in 2012 to sketch out IMT 2020, 5G's formal name. By 2015, ITU had come up with the broad lines of what 5G should be. In its vision, ITU called for 5G to deliver three things, as mobile broadband, EMBB, massive machine type communications, MMTC, and ultra-reliable low latency communications, or URLLC. Let's review those three requirements, starting with enhanced mobile broadband. Industries ranging from mining to entertainment need more bandwidth to implement their digital transformation. As we saw in the previous lesson, LTE Advanced, or 5G, currently peaks at one gigabit per second. That's fast, but it's not fast enough for several emerging applications. For example, search and rescue drones equipped with high definition cameras need to connect to machine vision AI while in the air. Or in the healthcare sector, paper is giving way to digital for patients' records. This assumes that wireless networks can quickly download large medical files, reliably and instantly. ENBB is ITU's requirement that 5G, should I say IMT 20, deliver up to 20 gigabits per second in downlink speed and 10 gigabits per second in uplink. With that kind of bandwidth, hospitals can go paperless and drones can upload 4K video in real time. We talk more and more about the Internet of Things. It sounds like something that's in the distant future, but it's been taking shape. For example, many homes are already fitted with smart electricity meters connected to the utility servers. Power companies use this data to optimize their power generation and distribution. Down the line, street lamps, cars, forklifts, factory machinery, and countless other things will also be networked. Eventually, all these connections would overload networks. The MMTC requirement mandates 5G to reliably support at least 1 million machine connections per square kilometer. That's 10 times 4G. It's enough to create not only smart cities, but also smart hospitals, where patients always get the correct drug. Medical supplies are tracked so they never run out, and where remotely monitored patients can be called in before they need to rush to emergency. You probably heard that 5G networks offer lower latency, meaning faster response times, than 4G. A variety of emerging network deployment scenarios depend on low latency and high connection reliability. Manufacturers, for example, are making their production lines smarter by synchronizing multiple robots to make them work together on complex tasks. And this can't be done without low latency and extremely high reliability of connections. Smart cars are another low latency, high reliability scenario. Through the internet of vehicles, cars will increasingly communicate with each other about the condition of the roads they're traveling on, or in an emergency, if they're going to suddenly break to a stop. URLLC is ITU's requirement that latency in 5G be sharply reduced to one-tenth that of 4G. At the same time, connection reliability is boosted to a near-perfect 99.9999%. The downside, of course, is that you won't be able to blame a bad network connection when hanging up on someone you don't want to talk to. Okay, well that's it for this lesson on how 5G surpasses 4G. In the next chapter, we'll see how industry standards enable the rapid deployment of new networks. 